Well, good evening, everybody. Wow, <laughs> speaker's working well tonight. Uh, good evening and welcome to the Chino City Council meeting. It's uh, June 19th, 2018. And we'll, if you please rise, we'll start with the flag salute. And that's gonna be done by Council Member George. So, Gary? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, a nation under God, Thank you, Gary. You may be seated. Okay, so this evening, first up is going to be a um, proclamation for the July, um, the July is Parks and Recreation, Recreation Month. We'll be presenting a, a short video highlighting Chino's exceptional parks and recreation programs, as well as the staff and community services um, and public works who will work hard to provide Chino community with excellent service all year long. And um, I apologize, I think the video is gonna be a little blurry, but I've been told that out there in the, in the real world, it's clear, and it will be clear for that. So we'll go ahead and let's, let's go ahead and start the video. Okay, there we go, that's our video. You can see recreational opportunities abound in Chino. You can see that. So I have a pro proclamation to read, and it's a, uh, whereas state public opinion research shows that 98% of California households visit a park at least once a year, that 50% uh, of households participate in organized recreation programs, uh, and most of us use the park with family and friends. Uh, parks and recreation programs are vital to establishing and maintaining quality of life in Chino and contribute, contribute to the economic and environmental well-being of our community. And park and they build strong, healthy, active communities that aid in the prevention of chronic disease and improve mental and physical health of all citizens. Uh, also, it helps for children to um, helping youth develop and grow into healthy, productive adults. In Chino, we're fortunate to have over 250 acres of parks and open space which provide opportunities for our community to celebrate. Uh, the Chino Community Services Department has adopted the California Park and Recreation Society's Make Life Better slogan and logo to promote the benefits of park, parks and recreation. And since 1985, July is celebrated across the nation as Park and Recreation Month. While the city of Chino urges all citizens to recognize the parks and recreation enriches the lives of its residents and visitors. And, uh, and on behalf of the city council, we'd like to uh, proclaim July 2018 as Park and Recreation Month. Um, and that's, that's what we've got for the, our proclamation. <laughs> and, and I have our chairman of our Community Services uh, Commission, uh, Kevin Cisneros, here to say a few words. Kevin. 
Thank you very much. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem Howie and council members. Uh, for those of you, again, who don't know me, my name is Kevin Cisneros, and I am a community services commissioner. I'm the chairperson this year. And on behalf of our commissioners, we want to thank our council for your continued support to provide the best recreation, programming, parks, and facilities in the Inland Empire. We are here tonight to recognize July as Parks and Recreation Month and encourage our residents to learn about the numerous programs offered for residents of all ages as well as visit one of, the, one of our beautiful parks or recreational facilities. The theme this year is a lifetime of discovery. All facilities will display this poster that Ted is holding to my left, your right, during the month of July. Although we highlight July, the Community Services Department creates a community all year round through the programs and facilities offered and Public Works Department's ground staff ensures that the city's parks are well maintained and they do that seven days a week. To celebrate July being Parks and Recreation Month, the Community Services Department will host an open house at the Neighborhood Activity Center July 21st from 9 a.m. to 12 noon to share with the community the programs and services offered. With me today is a small sample of the men and women of the Community Services and Public Works Department who work diligently to provide these wonderful services. It is an honor for myself and my fellow commissioners to serve with them. Will you please give them a hand? It really is an honor to be up here with you guys. All of these green shirts, you do so much for our city. We appreciate each and every one of you very much. I would like to encourage everyone to join us at the open house on July 21st and visit a park or facility in Chino for a lifetime of discovery. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Here's your proclamation. And again, thank you for all the service you guys do. You do a fantastic, and we're so proud in Chino of our parks. Yeah, thank you all. Appreciate that. Oh, quick picture. All right. Thank you very. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Okay, next is um, recognition of the Chino Cultural Foundation Scholarship winners. The Chino Cultural Foundation supports music, theater, and visual arts by providing scholarships to students living within the Chino Valley Unified School District and is pleased to uh, recognize this year's award recipients. Uh, the youth scholarship goes to students enrolled in music, theater, or visual arts programs and may be used for training instrument, rental, or purchase or to purchase equipment and materials. The Gretchen Hart McCombs Memorial Music Scholarship is awarded to a graduating senior who is enrolled in a college, university, or a music education major. Um, I'd like to call up. Where's my other sheet? I missed it here. Michelle Knight Reinhardt, a Chino Cultural Foundation board member. How are you? Good to see you. All right. Okay, so we need. Well, let me get this. Hang on one second here. Okay. All right. Would you like to say a few words? Um, well, our scholarship program has grown. This is the third year we've been giving scholarships. This year, there are 22 recipients of the Chino Cultural Foundation Youth Arts Scholarships, winners ranging in. Um, uh, disbursements of 100 to about $400. And then we have a single recipient again this year of the Gretchen Hart McCombs Memorial Music Scholarship, which was, uh, be which began last year um, in honor of um, the late Gretchen McCombs. And um, so we've given away this year, including the Gretchen Hart McCombs Memorial Scholarship, we have given away about $6,000 this year in scholarships. So. Supporting Arts in Chino. Awesome. Okay. Brianne Byers. Come on up. Oh my gosh. 
Caitlin Byers. Yeah. Alexis Sellis. Kellen Donovan. because they're all in band and theater and dance and they visual they artists and they know how to line up. Sophia Escobar. Ariana Fernandez. Sabrina Gorsage. Regina Guzman. She was here. Where'd she go? Well, nice out round of applause for her anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Audrey Nunez. Calvin Paris. Anthony Ryan. <laughs> Kaylee Tong. Let's go this way. David Yoon. And then, so these, these folks up here are all recipients of the Chino Cultural Foundation Youth Arts Scholarships. And then the uh, recipient of this, this year's recipient of the Gretchen Hart McCombs Memorial Music Scholarship is Bryce McNair. And that, those are all of our scholarship recipients for this year, 2018. What? Who's here? Oh, I'm sorry. Kaylee Hasegawa. Uh -huh. Anybody else? Anybody else? Kaylee is also a recipient of the Chino Cultural Foundation Youth Arts Scholarship. There you go. It's picture time. Come on up, take your pictures, parents. We got time. Well, thank you very much. It's great, students. You guys work hard, and it's really appreciated, and the arts are great, and it's fantastic. And kudos to the Cultural Foundation for the scholarships. So thank you very much, guys, and uh, have a good rest of the evening. And thank you, Michelle. Great job. Thank you very much. Well, we'll let them clear out for a second. It's great to see all the parents coming out. That's, that's so important. Okay, so uh, we're now going to report out of closed session. Uh, call upon the city attorney, Fred, to give us a report. Certainly, thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council and audience. The city council met in closed session to discuss the 
only item on the closed session agenda, namely conference with legal counsel existing litigation. The case name Zoehid uh, versus Hita Garcia and additional parties. City Council received an update to that litigation matter, provided direction, and no further reportable action was taken. That concludes the report out of closed session, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. All right, next uh, up is uh, public communications, and I'd like to call uh, up uh, Jody Moore, Praise Tabernacle Church, uh, to provide the invocation. At this time, I'd like to invite anyone who wishes to join us for the invocation to please stand. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Let's bow our heads. Gracious Lord, we come to you with hearts full of thanksgiving. We thank you for the privilege of prayer. We thank you for the privilege of living in such a great land, land of freedom and opportunity. We thank you for the privilege of living in such a great city, such as the city of Chino. Now, Lord God, we ask that you would continue to bless this city, that you would continue to favor this city, that you would continue to prosper this city, that you would continue to protect this city, that you would continue to push this city forward. I thank you for the leadership of the city, the city council, and all those who participate in the governance of this city. And I pray for continued wisdom. I pray, Lord God, for continued vision. We thank you so much for all that you have done and all that you will continue to do. Bless our children over the summer. Keep them safe. Keep every park safe during the summertime and we will give you all the glory. In the name of the one who lived for us, died for us, and rose for us, amen. 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 All right. Thank you, Pastor Moore. Okay. Hey, public communications. This is the time and the place for the general public to address the city council about subjects that do not appear elsewhere on the agenda. Due to council policy and Brown Act requirements, action will not be taken on any issues not on the agenda. Okay, remind, you're reminded you only have five minutes to speak. Um, and I have a couple of people who have put in cards to speak. And the first one is uh, Marion Arguello. Did I get that right? Marion? Huh? You're first up, Marion. Come on up. Okay. I don't think that I will even need anything near five minutes. Okay. Uh, first of all, good evening, Mayor Pro Temp and Council members. I, my name is Marion Arguello. I live in Chino. Um, and I just would like to commend my city council and the, and the Chino Police Department for their policy on immigration and ICE. <clears throat> Our city police are here to protect us not to do the work of another law enforcement agency. I am pro AB 54, SB 54, sorry, and I hope our town remains true to the California law, even though they are under pressure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Marion. Okay, I have another request, Carol Houghton. If you wanna come up. Well, even though Marianne and I are opposite sides of the issue, just to let you know, people are still talking about this. This is still an issue. Anyway, good evening, Council. Now, I've noticed that a vote on SB 54 is still not on the agenda. Now, I haven't got the re most recent update, but a couple weeks ago, it was 42 cities and 12 counties that have cared enough and were brave enough to vote to stand against this unconstitutional, dangerous law. Now, I'd like you all to look at this list. This is a partial list of people who have been killed since Kate Steinle was death from an illegal immigrant. I say partial because we don't really know how many people it is because um, newspapers and news uh, agencies tend to hide the fact that if somebody has been killed by an illegal immigrant, they don't mention it, or if they do, it's at the end of an article. Anyway, we probably think, oh, here in Chino, we're such a good community, and this couldn't happen here, right? Well, it did happen here about 
two, two miles from where we're sitting right now. I had a friend that came home, uh, this is about 10 years ago, came home one evening after a church meeting, and when she got out of her car, two men came up behind her, cupped a hand over her mouth, and dragged her behind the garage. <sighs> to keep it simple, let me just say that they, they sexually assaulted her, both of them. They were speaking Spanish, so she really couldn't tell the police what they said, and it was dark, so she couldn't really describe them well. Now, maybe you didn't hear about it. They didn't kill her. If they had killed her, you would have heard about it. But it makes me wonder, short of death, how many of these cases are there, and we never hear anything about it. The only reason I know about it is I know her, and she's part of my church family. How many others? This is an important issue. Now, the perpetrators didn't go to jail, but my friend lives a life sentence for what happened to her. For a long time, it was hard for her to get out of bed and just put one foot in front of the other. And you can imagine if this happened to your wife or your daughter or your sister, how you would feel. Well, She's brave enough now to do that, and are you brave enough to discuss this issue and send Sacramento a message? Are we either think this is a great idea to not turn over illegal immigrants that have committed something just short of murder, or do we want to stand against that? It's up to you. Just vote for all of the victims who are not being heard. Okay, well, the only comment I have on this is that SB 54, the sanctuary law, has not uh, adversely impacted our police department's ability to arrest individuals who commit crimes, for, regardless of their, uh, of their nat uh, nation of origin. So we, you know, we still, the police department has made, has made it clear to us that they are still arresting people regardless of what's happening up in Sacramento and, and its fight with the federal government. Um, <clears throat> The vetting of individuals for release from our local jails is handled by the county uh, sheriff's department and not the city of Chino. And um, you know we appreciate your passion for the subject, but uh, again, you know this this fight has to go to it's got to go to our state rep uh, legislators, or you know our, our assemblymen and our, our senator. It's got to go to it's got to go to Sacramento. So anyway, that's all I have to say on that subject. Anybody else wishing to uh, come up and speak to uh, at, with, on an item that's not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, we'll close uh, public communications and we'll move to the con consent calendar. And uh, I'm sorry. Oh, you want to come up? Okay, come on up. I'll reopen public communications. Could you state your name, please? My name is Arturo Guzman, and I live in Chino. And I just wanted to ask because um, it's a requirement for my Boy Scout Mayor badge. Ah. Yeah, um, I just want to know um, graffiti is. Uh, is a kind of problem in the city, and I just want to know what some things that you guys are doing to help prevent it, and what some things the youth can do to prevent that issue. Also, okay, that's great. Okay, um, I will refer to. Uh, we do a lot. We you know we do our best to, uh, for graffiti removal. One thing the youth can obviously do is report it. Report it. We have a graffiti hotline. You can call it. Uh, this get find it on the city website. Uh, Matt, would you like to comment about that? Uh, but report those things we do keep track of them and our PD even goes as far as to try to find the perpetrator and then if we are successful in locating that individual we require them to pay us back for the damage that they created right. thank you you know, I think part of the problem is, you know, as a, as a population increases, you just have more opportunities for graffiti, but we, we do our best to, to get it off as soon as possible. Okay, anybody else? Okay, all right, you want to come up? Please state your name. Hi, my name is Robin Shear, and I live on San Antonio Avenue, and I've gone to talk to the police officers before because the speed limit down that road, are, it's a, it's a, in, um, residential area, because uh -huh. it used to be all dairy on one side and houses, but now that's all sold, and it's all houses. Right. The speed limit down my residential area is 45 miles per hour. There are no speed signs. The officer said that's why you don't see one, because 
apparently the state, you guys don't govern this, the, that street because it was it used to be the highway back years ago when Chino was around. So it's got a faster speed limit, but I can't get a residential speed limit in there. Is that ever gonna happen? Question, uh, San Antonio between where and where? Uh, I'm, well, I live between um, Schaefer and Chino. Okay. And there has been, and then and the new school went on the end. It's been there for a while, roads. Right. I have seen a helicopter come to the park to pick up kids because they have to be airlifted. Our street gets packed at that end. I feel bad for the residents at that end because that's where all the parents start parking and blocking. And, they, and so the road, there are animals in our neighborhood that have been killed. Kids have been hit. Um, our cars have been hit, you know, because you just get these really fast from light right. to light. <clears throat> they just go beyond 45. And I've, I've, I've said to officers what? when I see them, you are more than welcome to sit on my driveway because somebody's going to die. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to die on this street, and, I, and I'd like I'm to get between, it. Between Schaefer and Edison, uh, it's, it's 35 and 25, obviously, for, you know, when school's in session. But you're saying it's right. 45 miles an hour between Schaefer and If you Schaefer look from Chino? Riverside... To Schaefer, which means you're going Riverside, so Riverside. Chino to Schaefer. South, yeah. You won't find <coughs> one one um, uh, speed yeah. speed so sign at all. There's so it nothing does, it because it says 45. Or there, there is no, no sign. sign. I was told no by sign. Chino PD that the speed is 45 on that road. That's why they don't want to post it because it's all residential now. There's no dairies anymore. Okay. Uh, this this, <coughs> this might coincide with um, item 21 on the agenda. We oh, is it? I didn't know. That. So we can address that. Anyway. We, yeah, we can. But we'll we'll check in. Yeah, it'd be speaker. great. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. Now we'll move it to the to the other item. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Come on up. Uh, my name is Gilbert Ramos, and I've lived in Chino for 16 years. I absolutely love this place. Great. When I take my walks, either in the morning or in the evening, I got my iPod on, and I just feel really safe. Beautiful city. Very well run. Uh, gentlemen, I have a legit grievance here. Uh, I got a pamphlet in the mail that said that our water rates are going to be going up in the very near future. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's we're, that's so, okay. Some of us are on uh, fixed incomes. Like, right. I'm, I'm getting a hearing for a permanent social security disability. I haven't got that yet, but I'm collecting my pension. And I'm Excuse very me. water wise, too. Uh, Excuse me, only... Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah. I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt. That's yeah. actually the subject of a public hearing later on in the right. agenda. Okay. If you'd like to actually have your testimony be part okay, of the record. I, I, I've got my protest letter too. Who do I give it to? Yeah. Right there. Okay. okay. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, we're going to be addressing this later in the meeting. So. Come on back. Up. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Okay. I'm going to close uh, public communications again. And um, we're going to go to the consent calendar. Can, and we, I need to ask uh, the city attorney to uh, about. Uh, um, y yes. On. The, any item where uh, there would be an abstention, you could actually approve the entire consent okay. calendar and just state whether any abstention applies to, to any particular item. So I okay, understand. Well, Dr. Rodriguez is not here for that. Right. Uh, meeting. Yes, I, will, I was not here uh, during that meeting, so I will recuse myself. Okay. From All right. Okay. Great. Anybody wishing to pull an item off the consent? Okay. Got to entertain my motion. Okay, and the consent calendar passes with f for four yes with one uh, one absent. Okay, all right. Cool. We're not reading anything, are we? That's not right. Three. It should be three and one. Oh, yeah, it should be three. No, because he's yeah. already abstained oh, okay. off that. So the whole consent calendar is oh, is four. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're now we're into public hearings. The first item is going prior to the vote of city council. Any member of the audience will have the opportunity to address the council on any items listed under public hearings. Council requests, but it's not required that you state your name and address prior to making any uh, remarks. Uh, number 16, water, sanitary, sewer, and street sweeping rate structure. We're going to conduct a public hearing, tabulate the written protest to set the rates for water, sanitary, sewer, and street sweeping services. So our report is going to be by, um, boy, I have to open the public hearing and announce that all protests must be in writing. Uh, and given to the clerk prior to the close of this public hearing. Now, if, you, if you're going to fill one out, we have some up in the front. If you haven't done it already, you've got to get in before, before we move on to this. So, and right now, our staff report is going to be by Olga Hart, billing manager. Olga? Hey, 
go. <laughs> structure analysis and the procedural requirements under Proposition 218 to implement these rate adjustments. The rate adjustments being proposed tonight include the transition to a water budget based rate structure effective November 1st of this year. No rate increase for the first year will happen. A 2% increase in sanitary sewer rates effective July 1st of this year and the elimination of the street sweeping uh, rate. In order to adjust utility rates, the city is required to comply with California's Proposition 218. Therefore, in compliance with Proposition 218, the city has taken the following actions. On May 1st, City Council adopted Resolution 2018-23 calling a special notice proceeding and setting tonight as the public hearing date. On May 2nd, staff mailed to all utility customers an informational brochure and a schedule of the proposed rates. Tonight, it is required that the City Council perform the following. The City must hold a public hearing on the proposed rates. The City must consider all written protest against the proposed rates. The City must adopt Resolution 2018-33 declaring the results of the notice protest hearing. The city must adopt resolution 2018-34, setting the rates for the water, sewer, and street sweeping. It should be noted that as of 20,194 notices sent to ratepayers, 37 protests have been received. That concludes my report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have this evening. Okay. Uh, do any members of the council have questions for staff on this? Uh, okay, now I can invite the public to speak on this item. Anybody want to come up and speak on this item? Now, please, come on up. You don't need a written request. Um, you want to come back up? Yeah, I'll come okay, up. Okay, come on back up. Well, you know, there's no way to tell well, how the weather's going to work for us, and I'm hoping that we, uh, we get lots of rain. And recently, my backyard, I just moved back into my house. I was renting out for a while, and the weeds were this high, so I cleared it all out and I'm gonna put some uh, Marathon 2 sod in there. It's really good grass that's uh, drought tolerant, doesn't take a lot of water. And many of us here in Chino, all of my friends are on uh, fixed incomes and we don't want to see a water increase. I don't think we need it. And hopefully um, the, the city council here will have a conscience and we'll put it on the scrap pile. Thank you very much. All right, anybody else uh, wishing to speak on this item? Okay. okay, come on up. Give us your name if you'd like. Anyway, the reason why I, for a long time, they have been talking water droughts and this and that, and we voted for no housing to be done, and it seems like they still keep building houses and they still keep building stuff. And I understand that the city needs money and I understand that kind of stuff. But if we have a problem with the water, why do we keep building more houses, especially when we voted against it? You guys find loopholes all the time to build and build and build and then we have to pay the water bill. People who are, like he says, low incomes and I mean, this is, you know, the rates keep going up. And what, and then in what, three years? And then uh, Governor Brown just keeps putting everything up <clears throat> and wants everything for us to pay. And I don't think that's fair. That's, and I don't really have a resolution. I don't know if, um, you know, like if, um, since builders want it, maybe builders should be paying for the, some of the water that they're, that they want the construction or somehow get the money somehow that way. But it's not fair for us as consumers, especially when we vote it, not to have certain things and then you, we keep paying, have to keep paying. That's not right. That's all I gotta say. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Well, unfortunately, you know, Pipes get old and the systems and the cost of water throughout the whole state has been increasing. So just like everything else that goes up, it's unfortunate and I, 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 you know, I hear what you're saying and I don't disagree with you, but unfortunately it's a matter of fact that water, water rates throughout the whole state is, are increasing. 
Our, our infrastructure is, is getting older and older. It takes a lot of money to fix that, to provide it. As far as the housing goes, we have a general plan. We have so many houses that are gonna be built. Um, and um, that's, you know, we're, we've, we're following that. So uh, that's all I got. Anybody, anybody wanna comment on that? Well, um, and, and uh, perhaps, uh, if I may interrupt, yeah. Mr. Mayor, both members of the council, before we have a discussion, it would be appropriate to close the public hearing if okay. there are no other speakers. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. So I'll close the public. Wait, you have one more back here? So from your comment there, it's, it's going to go up. From what you just said, the un infrastructure and all that. So from what you're saying, is it, are you just telling us now that it is going to go up? No, I'm just saying that it's going up all over the state. Everything's going up water-wise. Okay. I'm going to close the public hearing now. Go ahead. I just want to address that. It's a double-edged sword. They tell you to, it's drought time, cut back. You do that. Everybody, especially around here, has. But then the water company's income goes down, so they have to raise the rate to make up for it. So it's a double-edged sword. There's, there's really no winner in this. I have a suggestion. The housing that you're... No, don't worry. I close the public. Sorry. All right, I'll reopen it for you. Go ahead. The housing that you're allowing that we voted no against. You're, you're talking <coughs> about two different things, too. I'll charge them more. No, but you You don't. want these housing uh, people to come in? Charge them a little more. We're, we're, we've been here for a very long time. We don't need everything to go up. We don't need to follow the rest of the state. The housing that we voted against. You're, you're confusing allowed. what you voted against. You voted against a project and it was voted down and it's not there. And that could be. We easy. also voted against all the housing that was being built and it's. No, no, no. no. We just voted on one, one project was voted on, that's There's all. One project There's plenty of other projects for. that are gonna get built in the city. We have a general plan. We, you know, okay, well, we, we have more. Add, add a little more to them, not to the residents. Um, okay, go ahead, Paul. Um, I close the public hearing. You know, when, when you really look at uh, the city of Chino uh, compared to other surrounding cities, uh, the increases could be due also to the cost of living that we generally have every single year. and. Um, uh, when it comes to weather and so forth, you know, we have no control. We live in a, in a desert area, and thank God we're not Flint, Michigan. If we're, they're replacing all the pipes because yeah. of lead pipes. So you're talking about millions and millions of dollars. And uh, the increase that we have in Chino is not is relatively pretty low compared to other cities around us. That was, yeah, that was going to be my comment. The, um, uh, Matt, can you... Uh, what's the percentage here? What's the percentage of the cities that are raising around us? First, Fred, you want to address the... Uh, yes, sir, I w the comment I wanted to make in response to the testimony earlier about trying to charge differential uh, rates, uh, it, the city just cannot discriminate amongst homeowners. You have a set rate and, and it, it has to be equally applicable. So to your question, uh, Council Member George, um, in the first year, this is, we're just talking about the water rate. In the first year, there is no increase if we're just changing the rate structure. And the way the weight sh rate structure works, it's based on, you know, how much you use. Um, and again, if you use a lot more water than what you're allocated, you're gonna pay more. If you use less than what the average household uses, then you will pay less. So it, it incentivizes folks to wisely use water. Um, in years two, uh, three, four, and five, uh, it's a 3% increase or just the cost of li excuse me, living adjustment. And then um, I believe staff has surveyed other agencies and I, I do recall that City of Chino Hills proposed an 8% incre increase in each of the five years for a total of 40%. Um, I don't know if they, you've gotten any other cities. Uh, we looked at a couple other cities, and we are pretty much in line or below, especially in the first tier. So for the indoor use, we are low. And weather is a factor, so we do take that in, and we do, um, we will have monthly uh, weather percentages in there, and we're going to get it based out of here from Cal Poly Pomona. There's a weather station there, so we will factor that in. Mm -hmm. And um, there should be the first year. Um, most people, some people may see like a $7.37 decrease from their regular bill because of the first tier being lower. Uh, if we were to look at uh, Upland, it's double, double figures, I believe. 
I don't have Uplands numbers. I looked at Chino Hills, Pomona, and our surrounding area. Yeah, I think it's pretty pretty widespread throughout yeah. the state mm -hmm. at this time. Mm -hmm. All right, let's um, we close the public hearing, and I'd like to. Can I ask one more question? Sorry. Close the public. Hearing. No, we've closed the pub. We've closed the public hearing at this point. Uh, I ask the clerk to tabulate the votes, please. Thank you. Good evening. At the close of the public hearing, the city received 40 protests. Additionally, the city received 56 letters from individuals who objected to the water rate increase. However, those individuals did not provide um, their property address. Uh, because the total number of protests received is not sufficient, the proposition passes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, does the council have any further, other further comments on this item? Okay, I will entertain a motion. Okay, and it looks like we have three yeses and one no, uh, and so the uh, motion uh, it passes, okay? All right, now, we're not reading anything here, are we, Fred? No, right, okay. So, uh, moving on to- No ordinance to read, Mr. Okay. Mayor Pilton. Moving on, number 17, refuse and recycling rate structure. We're gonna conduct a public hearing, tabulate the written protest, set the rates for the refuse and recycling services. Um, I'd like to open the public hearing, announce that all protests must be in writing, given to the clerk prior to the close of the public hearing. Do we have anybody wishing to speak on the refuse and recycling rate structure? Okay. Seeing none, does any members of the council have a um, question for staff? We got one. Can I ask point of order? Since we are the public, we're not able to vote as what? Uh, our screens are down. You'll be able to see that on the, on the video. Um, yes, the, the okay. last vote was council member Elrod voting against it. Right. Yes, and that. The remainder of the council voted yes. 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 Right. Okay. Sorry, I forgot the, mon yeah, the monitors. Are yeah, that, that should be announced. We normally right. have the screen that yes, displays it, that. Okay, right. Okay, so any members uh, of the council wish to speak on this item? Hmm? No, seeing none. All right, I'll um, um, close the public hearing and ask the clerk to tabulate the number of protest letters. Angela. Thank you. At the close of the public hearing, the city received a total of 13 protests. This is not sufficient, uh, therefore the proposition passes. Thank you. Oh, I forgot the staff report by Olga. <laughs> <laughs> Olga, I forgot the, did you wanna give a, report? Give a quick ahead. report on that? Uh, rep I would recommend you reopen the public. Yeah, let's, re let's reopen the public here right now. Oh, trash. Or, but Olga, you wanna give us a staff report? Yes, I will give you the staff report. So tonight I bring before you the utility funds rate structure analysis and the uh, procedural requirements under Proposition 218 to implement these rate adjustments. The rate adjustments being proposed tonight are for the refuge and recycling services. Residential refuge service will see an increase of 31 cents per month in the first year. Future year years will increase based on actual CPI for those years. In order to adjust utility rates, the city is required to comply with California's Proposition 218. Therefore, in compliance with Proposition 218, the city has taken the following actions. On May 1st, council adopted Resolution 2018-24, calling a special notice proceeding and setting tonight as the public hearing date. On May 2nd, staff mailed to all utility customers an informational <coughs> procedure and a schedule of proposed rates. Tonight, it is required that the city council perform the following. The city must hold a public hearing on proposed rates. The city must consider all written protests against the rates. The city must adopt resolution 2018-37, declaring the results of the notice protest hearing. The city must adopt resolution 2018-38, setting the rates for refuge and recycling services. Please note we received 12 protest letters and that concludes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, anybody wishing to make a comment on this one now? Come on up. Come on up. Okay. Why do we have 
have to pay more for recycling when, when we're recycling the stuff? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, it's a question. Uh, recycling services, at what point in time recyclable products were, uh, China was buying a lot of our recycling products. Now China has implemented a 1.1% uh, contamination on recyclables. So when we send them and they want to purchase them, they have to have a 1.1% contamination. So they have to be as clean, as clean as can be. So they are actually sending product back. They're not purchasing as much as they used to. Um, some of the manufacturers are actually using new product versus recyclable products. So it costs us to actually um, get rid of the recyclables versus actually having China purchase them. Because they have us rinse the cans, make sure everything's clean before we even throw it into the recycling. We, so. A lot of people do do that and some unfortunately don't. And so when it becomes contaminated, we actually have to dump the whole load. So they can't uh -huh. actually keep the load if somebody dumps something in there. So as the trash truck's going along and he dumps one that's good and then he dumps one that's bad, it actually contaminates the whole load. So they're very careful at inspecting before they actually pick up your recyclables. Um, but we still want to recycle for the environment. Uh, we don't, whatever we can avoid going to the landfill um, is one of the best things we can do for our earth and future generations. But we're still penalized for it. <laughs> well, it they have to dispose yeah. of it. Yeah, good question, thank you. Thank you for that. Anybody else? Yeah, close the public hearing, and now the clerk, can you tabulate the uh, votes, Angela? Thank you. At the close of the public hearing, the city received 13 written protests. Um, the proposition carries, thank you. Okay, all right, any other council members wishing to? Um, with 13 uh, against, uh, what percentage is that? for it to pass. Is it 1% or 0.0001%? The city needed to receive 10,098 written protests. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. All right, so I'll entertain a motion. Okay, and I think we have uh, three yes and probably one no. Yes, Mayor Pro Tem. The right. motion was moved by Council Member George, seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Howie, mm -hmm. and uh, carried with three uh, in favor and one opposed, that being Council Member Elrod. Ah, thank you for that. Okay, all right. Okay, new business number 18, fiscal year 2018-19 city budget and appropriations limit. Okay, so our staff report tonight by Matthew Ballantyne, our city manager. Matt? Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Howie and members of the council. On May 10th, 2018, the council hosted a workshop where each department presented their proposed operating budgets for the next fiscal year. And at that workshop, the council provided direction as far as how we were gonna allocate our resources. Since, May, since the May 10th workshop, uh, we've made some notable changes. One of them was the, the council provided direction to add an additional $13,500 to the community support fund to cover the concerts in the park program. We incorporated recent appropriations approved by the council since the workshop for things like uh, the CDBG program, uh, Measure I Senior Bus Services, and then the recent award of the Sphere of Influence study. Finally, we added approximately $198,000 to equip and train our new uh, police officers that were proposed in the upcoming budget. Despite all these changes, staff is proposing um, a projected uh, general fund operating surplus of $133,000. As far as revenues, our revenues uh, remain stable. We project a 3% increase in sales tax revenue, 5% increase in property tax revenue, and we project that our development activity will remain as uh, the same as last year. As far as um, expenditures, most of these are associated with staffing, which is uh, our primary uh, expenditure. The first is the cost of living adjustments for our employees, which is amounts to 3%. This is also compounded by the pension uh, cost. It's important to note that while other agencies start to see their pension costs double, we recently paid down our unfunded liability by issuing a note, and the city purchased the note as an investment instrument that will result in significant savings and earn a greater rate of return for the city. The second, again, is staffing positions. In March, uh, we began to reor reorganize in an attempt to centralize our land development processing, our capital improvement program, 
and our building facility maintenance. To support this reorganization, an engineer and two administrative staff support members were added to next year's budget. In addition, I already mentioned, uh, staff is proposing two additional police officers and to convert three part-time positions to full-time to address ongoing growth and succession planning. All these changes are reflected in the executive summary of the budget. When looking at our fund balance or our savings or reserve, um, uh, our beginning fund balance is $52.7 million. We expect this fund balance to drop at the end of the next fiscal year to $43.6 million. And a majority of this is associated with one-time capital improvements, which include $6 million of general fund money to be applied towards street projects. In conclusion, I want to thank our staff for their efforts in preparing and managing their budgets while continuing to maintain a holistic view of serving the needs of our community. Overall, this is a fiscally conservative budget as it pertains to our revenue projections and expenditures. This concludes my report, and staff is available to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Uh, anybody wishing to in the audience wishing to speak on this item can do so now seeing none how about some council comments uh, on the budget well oh, go ahead go ahead okay go ahead uh, I want to commend the uh, the first responders the police and, and fire department and the EMTs for doing a great job because we're holding on to our mission of safety within the city and I think the need for uh, additional police officers fire and so forth is extremely important. So I, I recommend that. I thank uh, Chief Comstock for doing a great job with your staff. Sure. Don't say that again. You should get the head <laughs> on the raise. Jeez, budget will go up. <laughs> it's a mess. No, I want to thank all the staff and, and the yeah. departments, especially yeah. Parks and Rec. And we, we spend a lot of money in this city, and I think it goes to a, yeah. the right spots. And uh, we continue to work on revenues so we can get these go these things going and things fixed. So I appreciate the staff. <clears throat> good, Gary. Um, likewise, great job, great budget. It looks it looks really good. Um, the uh, just to let you know that the council did have quite a few questions, but uh, at the uh, workshop, the budget workshop, we asked <laughs> asked and answered. They were they were answered. The questions were asked and answered. <laughs> Um, to most of our satisfaction, and sent, you know any questions that we had since then, the staff has <coughs> stepped right. up and uh, and really really covered us. So again, thank you and uh, and a great job. Uh, one last thing is, uh, you know, when I look at the city, uh, I mentioned this to our city manager Matt. Uh, uh, think of an umbrella, uh, and the city being the umbrella with all the different departments underneath where all the systems are working in cohesiveness, uh, meaning uh, critical thinking, collaboration, communication. That's what, what makes the city move it forward. Uh, the mission statements of safety, prosperity, and joy for everyone in the city. So we are a city that is growing uh, with 87,000 plus, and, and I commend uh, all the systems and all the departments for what they do for all of us within the city. Thanks, Paul. You know, I'd like to echo my colleague's statements. It's true. We want to thank the city for working hard, and it's great to have a balanced budget this year. Um, so that's always a good thing when, you're, when your checkbook is balanced. So uh, with that, no more comments. Uh, call for a motion for the budget for next year. Okay, and the budget's approved for with one absence. Okay, congratulations, good job, Thank you staff. Moving on, annual contracts uh, number 19, um, amendments and purchase orders. Authorize the city manager to enter annual contract amendments. And Rhea Medina, you're our purchasing manager. How about a report? Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and members of city council. Included in the budget just adopted for fiscal year 2018 to 2019 are appropriations for regular ongoing services utilized by staff in carrying out the goals and objectives established for their departments. For the city's purchasing policy, contracts and purchase orders over $25,000 require city council approval. Staff has therefore prepared a comprehensive list of known contracts and purchase orders at this time for your approval. These contracts are for routine services that are necessary for regular ongoing operations in the city. 
It is therefore a staff recommendation that you authorize the city manager to enter into these, contra these annual contracts and to execute all necessary documents on behalf of the city. That concludes my report and I'm available for any questions. Okay, I'll open this up to public hearing. Anybody wishing to comment on this? Okay, seeing none, Count council uh, comments? None, how about a motion? And if I may recommend, Mr. Mayor, for them to announce who makes the motion yeah. and the second, please. Okay. So we have a, uh, a motion from Council Member Elrod, second by Council Member George. And it is approved four yes with one absent. Uh, do we need, did you, should we go back? And, and I was going to suggest that to the city clerk. We didn't announce the previous yeah. one here. So um, on number 18. Not sure if I heard that. Um, so. Number, uh -oh. eight, number 18 was moved by. Councilmember George, seconded by Councilmember Elrod, and okay. carried 4-0. Okay, thank you. thank you. All right. Okay, moving right along, we have um, number 20, Award of Professional Service Agreements, On-Call Construction Inspection Services, a report from Nicholas Ligori, our Development Service Director. Nick? Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and Council Members. Uh, the city has a number of public works inspectors that inspect variety of public facilities that are under construction, both from a capital improvement program standpoint and uh, in areas of new development like the preserve and college park. Due to the level of activity, it is necessary for the city to hire some additional contract inspectors. The city has had a contract with, with two companies that provide uh, personnel for those services for the past three years. Uh, both of those contracts have expired, and so therefore the city uh, put out a, um, a request for proposals to solicit new input. Uh, we had 19 firms submit their proposals, and two were selected, uh, Wildan Engineering and KOA Corporation. Uh, the uh, staff is proposing a contract for each of those firms in the amount of $200,000 for a total of $400,000 to provide those services. Staff recommends that the council take the actions noted in the staff report and I'm available for questions. Okay. All right, I'd like to open this up to public comments. Anybody wishing to speak? Seeing none, council comments on this? Uh and now this is, this is just an on-call. We don't really know how much we're gonna spend, right, uh, in this situation? We will most likely spend all of the budget. Okay. Uh, however, these fees are offset by inspection fees that are charged for these services. Okay. So they're 100% they're um, returned. Okay, very good. All right, a motion. Hey, we got a, I just missed it, too fast. I. <laughs> I hit the button too fast. Go ahead, Angela. Moved by Council Member Elrod, seconded by Council Member George, and carried 4-0. Okay, thank you, thank you. All right, number 21, amendment to a comprehensive speed zone resolution and changes to functional classification of city streets. Um, are, are we on 20? 22. <coughs> oh, oh, I'm right on 21. Yeah, right. Uh, staff reports by Jose O'Leary, Assistant City Manager. Right? How are we doing? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Howie and Council. The California Vehicle Code requires agencies to update their speed surveys every five to seven years. These speed surveys are what helps us establish uh, the posted speed limits throughout the city. Now, the Public Works and Police Department started this process about two years ago, um, and we've been uh, doing a lot of work prepping for tonight. A complete evaluation of the roadway classifications was done and engineering and traffic surveys were conducted. This update also established speed limits on new roadways constructed due to new development. This was all done consistent with the requirements of the California Vehicle Code as well as the Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices. This update will allow our police department to continue using radar for speed enforcement and provide motorists with a reasonable and appropriate speed limit on Chino roadways. Therefore, the staff's recommendation that the City Council approve Resolution 2018-035, amending the Comprehensive Speed Zone Resolution of the Chino Municipal Code, updating speed limits throughout the city, approve Resolution 2018-036, authorizing submittal of the functional 
functional classification change form to the State of California, Department of Transportation, and the Federal Highway Administration, and authorize the city manager to execute all the necessary documents on this. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions on this item. Also, I'd like to say that uh, Sergeant Jason Cloak is in the audience from our police department to answer any questions as well and thank him and the police department for supporting us with this project. They were instrumental in making sure that we addressed everything and it was accurate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leary. I'll, I'll open this up for uh, public comments. Anybody wishing to speak? Uh, on the speed limit situation? Well, yes, uh, she, she had raised a, a question as it relates to so San Antonio I between, I yeah, so, uh, so the, the question was about the posting of San Antonio between Chino and, uh, Sh yeah, Schaefer. Sure, and I'd be happy to answer that. Go ahead. Um, you know, part of our analysis was to look at roadways and reclassify them consistent with the federal highway maps and the state maps. This was one of the roadways. We worked closely with our police department because she is correct. Um, it was not posted. Um, it is classified as a local road. It's going on the maps. It's part of the resolution. And, and if approved tonight, it will be posted 25 miles per hour. 25? Okay. 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 Wow. Thank you. That's a big drop from 45 to 25. Yeah, I don't get a lot you probably would. You probably would have settled for 35, right? <laughs> That's, that's good, that's great. All right, so let's uh, get a, a comment, uh, Mr. George. Yeah, because I live off of San Antonio also, oh. and never knew that was 45. I didn't yeah. know until I went to Coffee with the Cops. I went to there you go. Those, and an officer told me. Okay. Right. I had no idea. Jason will tell me next time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's entertain a motion. Okay, so this time I'm, I'm going to do this, Angela. We got a motion from Council Member George, second by Council Member Elrod, and the vote is four yes with one with uh, one absent. Okay, very good. All right, number twenty. Do you want to take a break or what? You okay? All right, number twenty-two, award of contract, water distribution system, on-call repair services. Our staff report tonight is by Amanda Coker, associate engineer. Amanda. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of the City Council. The City's water distribution system consists of approximately 265 miles of pipeline and 20,000 water service connections, which require both routine maintenance and emergency repairs. It is critical to attend to emergency pipeline repairs immediately. However, at times, the number of repairs exceeds available staff resources. Consequently, staff prepared a solicitation for water distribution system on-call repair services. On April 16, 2018, the notice inviting bids was published on Planet Bids. One bid was received by W.A. Rasik, which is who is properly licensed and was determined to be a responsible and responsive bidder. Two bid schedules were included in the solicitation with bid schedule one listing labor and equipment and bid schedule two listing materials. Staff is recommending that the city provide materials and move forward with bid schedule one only and award a contract to W.A. Rasik in an amount not to exceed $200,000. That concludes my presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thanks Amanda. Open the public uh, hearing. Anybody wishing to speak on this item? Seeing none, any council uh, comments? No council comments? I'll entertain a motion. Okay, it's moved by uh, council member George, second by council member Elrod, and it's a four for a yes and one absent. Okay, thank you. All right, I think that concludes our items this evening. We'll move on to um, um, council comments. All right, well, so. That's been, that's been the, mayor's not the mayor's not here, so there's no council comments. Now we'll have council comments. I have to read a statement, too. Um, so first, I'd like to give a final reminder that our annual fireworks spectacular will happen next Saturday, June 30th from 3 to 10 p.m. in Ruben S. Ayala Park, 14225 Central Avenue. As one of the most anticipated events, please don't miss out on the family fun, including games and carnival rides, great live music. We have food vendors and, of course, an outstanding fireworks show. 
of importance, please make sure you don't miss out on the show's military recognition portion, which begins at 7 p.m. We have a big band out there. It's really a lot of fun, a great event. Uh, the actual fireworks show starts at 9 p.m. For more information, please call our community services department at 909-334-3258. Not on the screen. Um, next in our continuing our Chino Summer Night Series. I want to invite everybody to come out this Friday and enjoy great food, family fun activities, retail booths, and the classic movie Hook is going to be this. Um, I just saw it on TV. Uh, it was a, a couple days ago. It was on TV. I watched part of that. The event starts at 6.30 p.m. right here on the City Hall lawn. Should anyone like more information, again, call Community Services at 334-3258. Uh, of course, that's 909. Also, I'd like to, everyone to mark their calendars for the Chino Kiwanis Club Chino Concerts on the lawn. So here they're coming up again, our concerts, which is uh, really a lot of fun. Starts every Thursday night from July the 12th to August 16th. Starting at 7 p.m., this free event will have multiple food vendors. And, of course, don't forget the corn from the Rancho Chino Rotary Club. It's very good. Um, not that I have anything to do with that. But and outstanding tribute bands, including we've got uh, a Journey tribute, uh, Silverados, which is country, a foreign tribute, Fortunate Son, a Credence Clearwater Revival tribute, Wanted Bon Jovi tribute, and Bonfire, which is an ACDC tribute. All events will go to 9 p.m., so mark and bring a chair out on the lawn. We always have uh, literally thousands of people, um, so come out for that. And lastly, because the regular scheduled city council meeting of July 3rd falls so close to the 4th, we'll be canceling our meeting and uh, holding our next regular city council meeting on July 17th as such. On behalf of the City Council, I want to wish everybody a happy 4th of July. And I have a couple more things I wanted to comment on. I attended a number of events. I'll make this quick. Omnitrans and uh, SBCTA, the Transit Authority, I attended meetings on the 6th. Water Facilities uh, Technical uh, Advisor Meeting on the 7th. Chino DeSalter Authority on uh, Board Meeting on the 7th. SBA uh, Dinner in Ontario. Um, we also the uh, another SBC, a lot of SBCTA meetings. And then, of course, Captain Bassard from our police department that retired, his uh, walk, uh, his, his final end of watch walk was uh, very special. There was a, there was a lot of uh, emotion going on after his 30 years here uh, at the police department. Very much admired, and what a great uh, addition he was for all those years. Uh, our, our chief, uh, Comstock, did a very nice moving uh, uh, speech and tribute to him, which was good. And also, his dinner, his retirement dinner was Friday night at Chafee College, and it was probably, well, it was outstanding. It was the, probably the best retirement dinner I ever saw. It was so classy, and people, it was it was really fantastic. And then, kind of a fun thing, uh, I was at Don Lugo on Saturday afternoon, out in the sun without a hat, which wasn't too smart, because Joe Marcos, uh, the baseball field was named after Coach Marcos, and uh, I see Sylvia Orozco in the audience, and she was there. Um, and it was uh, it was good. the all bunch of the players came, and they kept trying to get Coach Marcos uh, to say which baseball team in the 27 years was his best team, and he's never ever said he said you could be, but he's never actually come out and said. Anything. And there's there were a bunch of different years they were trying to pride him uh, and get him to say who was the best, but he wouldn't do it. But a classy guy. And congratulations to Joe. Uh, the field is named after him. Okay, next, Earl. I just want to uh, thank staff and everything for the walk of honor. Uh, very impressive. He's a very, I don't know how to put it, gentle man, I guess. He's, he's well-spoken. He thinks of everybody in this, and he loves this city, and it showed. And I don't think there is any, anything he hasn't been involved in in the last 30 years. So congrats to him. I hope he enjoys his retirement. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Paul? Vibrators? I have about 20 pages. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go quickly. Uh, June 1st, I attended the <coughs> University of Laverne uh, School of Law mock DUI trial with uh, Buena Vista High School. And the key <coughs> focus was really to introduce the students to legal pathways and any interest that they may have in uh, uh, legal uh, uh, directions <coughs> for their careers. Uh, June 6th, I attended um, the inaugural Inland Empire Healthy Cities, which investigated different uh, programs for helping uh, live a healthy life. Uh, June 9th, online, I was an online evaluator for Helen Putnam, a judge for 12 cities to understand how 
cities are working and, and what is working for them, and we can bring it back to our city. Uh, June 9th through 10th, uh, I'm involved with the interfaith uh, uh, organization, St. Margaret's uh, Catholic Church, with voter registration. This is the second time around. And also with documentation, immigration, legal support for any, any individuals that may need this. And to add to that, uh, this, this Sunday, the 24th, uh, uh, voter registration and legal immigration uh, documentation help will also occur at uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe Interfaith uh, Church also. Uh, June 9th, I attended the Explorer Academy graduation, which was uh, very moving and exciting. Uh, uh, the Explorers do a great job. I mean, uh, some of the things that they had to do with that spray, being sprayed in the face with uh, pepper spray, uh, I, I mean, that's tough. Uh, June 11th, uh, I met with uh, Victor Garcia from uh, San Bernardino County uh, Schools, uh, for which we're, uh, I'm going to be working with him with stud student leadership engagement and support for the students at Don Lugo. Uh, on June 12th, I attended the uh, Tony Melendez uh, concert. Uh, as some of you that don't, don't know about Tony, he was born uh, without arms and taught himself to play the guitar with his feet. Uh, he was recognized by Pope John Paul II uh, in 1988, excuse me, 1988, and is very well world famous for what he does uh, Tremendous talent. I even saw him once drink a beer with his feet, so, uh, with a mug. Uh, yeah, <coughs> learns a lot of tricks. You know, so. Anyway, June 13th, I, I attended the Castle Park uh, Riverside uh, Express celebration for the 100th, celebration for the founder of the park. And uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't aware that the founder, uh, Rob, uh, was also very influential in developing and working with Walt Disney and also with uh, Knox Berry Farm in miniature uh, trains and so forth. So he was very instrumental and it was uh, a lot of fun seeing the folklorical dance, dancers and so forth and some very good food. Uh, June 14th, uh, again, uh, I attended with uh, the rest of the council, the uh, Keith's uh, Walk of Honor and I thought it was quite an honor for me to be there, to be able to be in attendance to this uh, tremendous uh, years of service that he's given to uh, the safety in our, our city and to the residents of our city. Uh, June 14th, I attended the League of California Cities and the key focus was a discussion on homelessness and what the sheriff's departments in, in San Bernardino are doing to uh, help and support uh, the homelessness that we're suffering throughout the county and probably Southern California. Uh, June 15th, I was invited and attended the Muslim community celebration at the Big League Field of Dreams where it was an end of the year celebration. There was over 3,000 uh, uh, community members from the Muslim community and it was quite, quite an honor to be there and, and see such a, a large group uh, uh, honoring their celebration. Uh, June 15th, uh, I attended uh, the BIA uh, housing conference. The key focus was on housing, the housing crisis, not only in, in San Bernardino, but throughout California and throughout nationally. And, and there's a, there was a report written by a CSU San Bernardino professor, economics professor, who uh, really describes uh, uh, the need and gives justification, a quantitative and qualitative justification for why we need to have a trades pathway mm. and also increase in, in uh, uh, housing throughout California. Uh, June 15th, I, I attended likewise the dinner uh, for Keith. Uh, great food, great people there. Uh, it was very, very well attended. Uh, Avocado House does a really nice job with all the food as, as usual. Um, prior to the, to the council meeting today, I, I attended uh, uh, the Chino Cultural Foundation. I am the liaison for that. And uh, it brought back a lot of memories of the arts because my background educationally, uh, I have a, a BA in uh, uh, music history and literature from Boy Names College in Oakland and also a Master of Arts from uh, CSU Fullerton in musicology. So uh, the arts are important for humanity and, and it was quite an honor to be there and, and see the recipients of, of all the young youth that are going in that <coughs> direction. So besides having STEM, there is also a, a program called STEAM and the STEAM, the A stands for the arts and, and, and uh, being a human being, we need the arts also in what we do. So this concludes my 
short report. Thank you for the short report. Councilman Rodriguez, would you mind uh, uh, asking for your community support? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, uh, as you all know, uh, I am very aware of uh, uh, how the Portuguese community has, has worked on dairies and contributed to the residents of, mm. uh, and the community of Chino. So I'm, I'd like to uh, recommend uh, a contribution of uh, $1,000 uh, to the Chino Valley DES Portuguese Club to be expended okay. for the community support program. All right. Do we have a motion for that? Moved by uh, Council Member Elrod, second by Council Member George, and the vote is four yes, one absent. Okay, Gary George. Okay, I'll try not to be as verbose as my fellow council members. <laughs> on uh, June the 9th, the, uh, attended the Chino PD Explorer Academy graduation. On the 11th, the uh, Chino Police Department swearing in ceremony. On the 12th, uh, chaired the, uh, the California Institute for Women Oversight Board meeting. Uh, and uh, if anyone's interested, uh, they are looking. Uh, they are looking for volunteers from the community to uh, to work with the uh, um, with the uh, with the prison. And uh, there's a um, uh, they're looking for volunteers and advisors. And there's a mixer at the prison on June the 26th. If anyone's uh, interested in volunteering out there, hmm. they've got a great group of volunteers, but they can always use more. On the 13th, attended a Chino Day at the Fair meeting with uh, Council Member Howie and, uh, and uh, Dr. Reich. Hmm. And on uh, the 13th also, the, uh, uh, we met the investment uh, uh, committee met with uh, Council Member Howie and uh, uh, City Manager oh. Matt Valentine and, uh, and Rob. Um, and also that same uh, afternoon, they uh, had a meeting with, uh, with Matt Valentine and uh, and Karen Comstock on the uh, right. um, some issues in College Park, and then the uh, 14th, uh, the Walk of Honor for Captain Bussard, and uh, also the same <coughs> evening the League of California Cities Executive Board meeting, and as Councilmember Rodriguez said, they've got a great program on homeless outreach, and maybe we can work together with our hot program with uh, with the uh, with the county. The on the 15th. Uh, Attended also the Building Industry Association Housing Policy Conference, um, and a couple of interesting notes, which were a little different than last year's uh, housing conference. Um, uh, some of the presenters are saying that the lumber costs are the single most reason for not being able to build afford affordable homes, and secondly, it's the labor force or lack thereof, and just uh, decrease in in skilled labor uh, that's causing a lot of these issues. Then um, and then the evening, um, and as was mentioned, uh, Captain Broussard's retirement dinner, and I've been to numerous retirement dinners over the, <coughs> over the years. This was probably the best one I have ever ever attended. The the, uh, the speakers were great. All the speakers, his, his sons, his his comments, uh, everyone that, that 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 spoke did a fantastic job, uh, phenomenal job. Phenomenal. And uh, it was it was so well done. That even President Trump showed up to uh, to <laughs> congratulate him. Da -da -da. Okay, the um, the uh, then on the uh, 18th a, a Chafee College meeting, uh, which we will be discussing uh, in the, in the future, uh, on, some, on some issues that they've got, and uh, uh, also on the 18th the Chamber of Commerce board meeting, <coughs> and if uh, no one has heard uh, the uh, former. Exec Jason Zara is um, has left, and uh, Zeb Wellborn is the new executive director of the uh, Chino Valley Chamber of Commerce. And then that evening in the uh, planning commission meeting, and that's it. Okay. And for the Chino champion, that there, it wasn't the real President Trump. Okay. <laughs> I just want like we don't want that in the paper. Okay. Okay, because you know things can be taken out of context, right? <laughs> right. Okay. And then also I have. Um, um, I, have, I have one final community support fund, um, and that is to for the Chino Kiwanis uh, Club summer concert, c concerts a, um, from our uh, community support program. I'm asking for $500, so I need a motion. Okay, so it's uh, moved by uh, Council Member Elrod, second by Council Member George, and the vote is again four yes with uh, one 
uh, absent. Okay, uh, time for our city manager's report. Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Howie. Um, Mayor Uloa sends her regrets. Um, she had an item on uh, the agenda, item number 23. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to attend this evening um, as she's caring for her husband, Bob. Uh, we hope Bob is doing well. But uh, item number 23 is requesting uh, community support contributions in the amount of $500 for each of the following uh, groups. That's Ch Chino National Little League, Chino American Little League, Chino Girls Fast Pitch Softball, Chino Pop Warner, and the Chino Boxing Club. And that totals 2,500. And in addition, she would like to allocate $2,500 in community support uh, to the summer concert series that's uh, <coughs> uh, sponsored by the Kiwanis Club. Um, so that's the first item. So if the council would she consider that action, uh, she would appreciate that. Yeah, I was gonna get a motion. I have a motion um, from Gary George. I need a second. From uh, Council Member Elrod, and the vote is, again, four yes, and um, uh, uh, with one absent. Okay, so moving right along, we're ready for the uh, city attorney's report. Go ahead. No report this evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Our police chief, Karen. Comstock. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Howie and members of the City Council. A couple of things real quick I'd like to address. I'd like to assure the Council at the last meeting you heard some uh, residents from the 13300 block of San Marcos come up and express some concerns about their neighborhood. I want to assure you and staff that we are working with them. It's going to be a, a longer term solution to this problem, but we are trying to get the proper resources to that, to that neighborhood and there will be more to follow to staff specifically on that moving forward. Addif additionally to Mr. Ms. Shear tonight is here. Um, it just so happens that my traffic sergeant is here as well as my commanding officer over my operations division. Um, that is absolutely good news about the traffic surveys that were passed this evening. They allow for us to conduct specifically radar speed enforcement throughout the city. We can't do that without them legally uh, with the exception of uh, residential neighborhoods in the maximum uh, state speed limit. But tonight, it, it would be appropriate, I do believe, with the change in some of those speed limits to, for us to conduct some public education prior to taking enforcement action. So while that is good news for you, it is appropriate for us to also educate the public on some of these speed changes, particularly one that is that significant. And the last thing I'd like to cover this evening, uh, also, Ms. Shear, we have uh, tools available to you in the future, as well as other neighborhoods, to conduct a proper assessment of when those speed violations are occurring so we can deploy our resources properly. And I'm sure the sergeant will follow up with that at a later time. Last thing I'd like to discuss tonight is our fireworks season, right? It is time for everyone to have a good time celebrating, but I'm asking for our community, community as I have in the past to celebrate responsibly. First, I want to discuss our freedom celebration deployment on Saturday, June 30th, Mayor Pro Tem, as you've already stated. As you know, this is a very popular event and literally draws thousands of attendees for the daytime festivities because of its remarkable fireworks show at the end. Our police department will have several officers working in various assignments at Yellow Park along with support staff and employees from code enforcement. It is a large open venue event and the public safety and security is our primary mission at the police department. We will have officers deployed throughout the venue for traffic control, fixed location on, and on bicycles. We will also be using our equipment such as our Skywatch observation tower, which is a crow's nest that we borrow from the county and our <coughs> UAS devices, commonly known as drones to ensure the safety of everyone attending. I can assure you this is gonna be a great event and I encourage people to attend. And as always, if you're there and you're attending, if you see something suspicious, please say something immediately so our officers can respond appropriately. Next, I'd like to discuss our July 4th deployment. This holiday by far is one of the busiest of the season for us and the department will be well staffed to deal with the heavy call volume specifically related to illegal fireworks. Our enforcement efforts have already been underway. We have already made three arrests for the sales of illegal fireworks and seized to date over 600 pounds of illegal fireworks. We will continue to conduct these covert operations as the holiday approaches. We take this seriously, we find them on the internet, we find them in different locations. Um, if you're selling illegal fireworks in Chino and we, we contact you, we will arrest you and seize all your fireworks and go back uh, as appropriate to different locations where you're storing them and get those as well. We will have a multitude of officers being deployed on the evening of July 4th. Our operation will focus mainly on fireworks enforcement between 7 p.m. and 1 a.m. in the morning. 
We will work in collaboration with the Chino uh, Valley Independent Fire District. We'll have members of their staff ride with our police officers. We will also have our UAS team ready to assist with illegal fireworks violations. And I would like to remind the public that the use of illegal fireworks in Chino is a violation of our municipal code. And if you are caught using these fireworks uh, uh, during this time period, you will receive a $1,000 citation. Also, all fireworks, even safe and sane ones, are not permitted in our parks, commercial shopping center areas, or outside the permitted fireworks zone, and there is a $500 fine for using even the safe and sane fireworks in improper locations. This will also be the first year we plan to allow for fireworks violators to be issued tickets by attestation or by a social host ordinance. This means that if you're observed by your neighbor or nearby witnesses using illegal fireworks, you may be issued a ticket once the police arrive. We're conducting a public ed education campaign on that and talking about tickets by attestation. This is part of a, some of the changes recommended by our uh, community services department to our code and we'll be using those resources as well this year to enforce fireworks violations. And as a reminder, a dangerous firework is one that explodes or flies into the air or across the ground and does not have the fire marshal seal attached. Just in closing, I encourage everybody to celebrate the July 4th holiday. It's one of my favorite events, you know, outdoor barbecue, swimming pool, and of course firework celebrations. But please, out of courtesy and respect <coughs> to your community, our animals and our neighbors, do not use illegal fireworks to celebrate the holiday. They are dangerous in our urban dry community, and you will receive a ticket if you violate one of our fireworks laws. That concludes my report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Go ahead, Gary. The, um, this, I think this is the first year we've added the social host ordinance. Yes, it is, sir. And it, it works in other cities. Uh, <coughs> First-hand reports, it works very well in other cities, and I hope our citizens <coughs> take advantage and use the social host mm -hmm. ordinance because um, they go after the, uh, the, the property owner. And it really, uh, it really curtails and has curtailed firework, illegal fireworks in a number of cities. So I hope we, uh, we take advantage of that this year. We're looking forward to using those resources as well as our drones and other things to enforce fireworks violations this year, sir. Good. Any other questions from the council? I think that's it. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Appreciate sir. That. And of course, one of the other problems is we have people come from out, they come into Chino, buy fireworks from out of town mm -hmm. and shoot them off. And they don't know, you can't do it in the parks or in the commercial building. So that's, that's always a challenge for us also. I don't know how many tickets we write from people who come from out of town, but I'm sure there's a pretty good number of those. Okay, uh, Fire Chief Shackelford, you probably have some firework, uh, uh, you probably have some fireworks of your own, huh? Yes, sir, I do. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem Howie and members of the council. I'd like to echo Chief Comstock's comments regarding fireworks uh, and just to, uh, to note that we will have additional resources available on the 4th of July as well. And we do appreciate the efforts of the city of Chino